This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. You would think I'd learn something. This is Wretched Radio. I don't. I continue to listen to Joey. Inevitably, that turns out to be a problem. Joey. Yes. I presume this is in reference to Psalm 133, which we discussed yesterday about unity in the body. Jesus wants us to be one. How? Like he and the Father are one. So when you and I are loving one another in unity, even when we disagree on this or that, which is not an essential theology, then we reflect and resemble the Trinity. And that's what we're here for as image bearers. We have more opportunities than we think to represent God. When you work, you're being an image bearer. When you're creating, you're being an image bearer. When you're being kind, you're being an image bearer. When you speak the truth, you're being an image bearer. When you have unity with one another, uh, you're, you're, you're being like an image bearer who's reflecting what God is like. That's the importance of unity. So Psalm 133 says that unity is like oil pouring down the beard, the beard of Aaron. Which to me, I think would make a mess. How do you get that out of the robes? They didn't have the type of detergent thingy. Shout. They didn't have shout back then. You just had to wash it on a rock down in the Jordan River. That which is where everybody did their laundry in the Old Testament. You can just look that up if you want to. So Joey, you <laughs> sent me a link from what organization? Catholic Beard Balm. Catholic Beard Balm. Uh-huh. And yep. what exactly is Catholic Beard Balm? It is handmade in small batches from an all-natural blend of almond oil, shea butter, beeswax, and cocoa butter with blends of essential and aroma oils. Well, as long as it's got essential, it's got to be good. Okay, yeah. Available in five aromas, chrism, holy smokes, lectio, (laughs) orthodoxy. That's funny. That's Oh, the orthodoxy is an homage to G.K. Chesterton. Oh. And Franciscan. And, 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 each tin includes a prayer card. Ah. So then you put the balm on your beard and you start reading G.K. Chesterton? Is that what I got from all of this? Something like that. Yeah, didn't Father the, Brown. Didn't mystery. the site, because you sent me the link, didn't it say something like the manliness of a beard and that it's a Catholic thing to do that a man should grow a beard? Uh, I, you know, I didn't, let's see. I thought that was a part of ad. it. I'm looking at the site now, not the ad. I'm not sure. Now, look, and, and, and I can't engage oh, yes. with the argument because I haven't heard it, but I have... I've heard rumors that there are some people who insist, no, a, a Christian man must have a beard. Um, it's a unique signifier of, of what? manliness. That not you don't anymore, like to shave? Man. Who of us does? What does it signify? That, that you're, you're Catholic? manly. Huh. I see. That you're manly. All righty. I guess then... I need to get really busy on crashing a beer can into my forehead, too, because that is a sign that I'm manly. Actually, a beard is not a sign that you're manly. A beard is a sign that you've got facial hair. That's that's what it's a sign of, and I can't think of anything biblical. Uh, I suspect... It's a sign that you're male. Well, there's lots of signs that we're male. Hey, what about the bearded woman? Okay, I, I saw her. She was real. I got to tell you something. Wow. So you're the target demo for the circus. Got I it. Am, sadly. Do they still have a bearded woman at the Minnesota State Fair? Because I got to tell you something. I'm going to the Minnesota I'm State sure Fair. sure you can this run year, into one. And I. <laughs> oh. I'm now going to practice discretion and for a change leave that one alone. Because, Joey, I do not know to whom you are referring. I don't know either, but I'm sure there's someone there mm-hmm. who uh, is both yeah. female and bearded to now some you, can, degree. Can you not walk behind a human being, a carbon-14 unit? I'm sorry I'm trying to use the correct vernacular. Can, can you not tell the difference? I don't think it takes a beard, but that's just me. Speaking of Jordan Peterson, who's growing a beard right now, I was just reading an article on Jordan Peterson. Somebody did a very fine job of just... Line, ah, uh, it was a creation magazine. It was a creation, ah, uh, I wish I could find it. Joey, would you Google Jordan Peterson, comma, creation, 
and just see what comes up if there's an article about it. They went through his lecture. Jordan Peterson is very influential. You should know about this man. He's the psych professor at the University of Toronto, and he's caught on like wildfire because he talks a bit of common sense. How he gets there, abiblical, but he has a lot of things to say that resonate with Christendom, but they're not based and rooted in the Bible. He claims to sort of be a Christian, but this particular article went through He's not a Christian because he doesn't believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. He does not believe in the miraculous, the supernatural. He does not believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God for all of life and godliness. He does not believe in the Trinity. And on and on it went. And yet he calls himself sort of a Christian. And I think a lot of Christian young men who are looking for, how can I be manly? You know, besides growing a beard and getting Catholic beard oil, how how do I do this? They are flocking to him in droves. I think a part of this might just be because of the divorce rate or the absentee father rate. They are looking for somebody to just guide them and speak authoritatively and knowingly, which should tell the seeker-sensitive squish bomb pastor, put your pants on, put your beard oil on, and start preaching it with some authority. The way that we're supposed to, with some conviction, We have a tendency these days to be soft-spoken because we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. We don't want to come across as a know-it-all. It seems to me people are looking for that. They want to hear that. Tell me. I don't know. Give me a clue how this is supposed to work. Can I tell you a story about somebody you know whose name I probably shouldn't mention because it would probably embarrass him? I received a phone call mm, Sunday from a buddy, and you probably know who it is. This, this just, this just, this just astounded me that this fellow called to ask me some questions. And, and, and what he was asking about was radio formatics. He, he, he said. I, I want to get better at what I'm doing. Now, look, I recognize you? just like exactly it was the wrong number. I get it. He intended to email or text somebody else before we talk. I get that. But there I was. Uh, that aside, that to me, it's like, dude, you're so humble to do that. That is such a mature thing to recognize. Look, I haven't been doing it as long or I don't know how to do it as well as I think that I should be able to. And to tap into an older person to go, give me some wisdom. Whether I had it or not isn't the point. But the point is that that young men should be striving to do that. They don't a lot, but they should. And the truth is, if Jordan Peterson is any barometer, they are. They're just getting it from all the wrong places. Joey, were you able to find anything with Jordan Peterson uh, creation? Creation Ministries International. Did they do an article? Yeah. Would you click on it, please? Yes. Start is scrolling. Genesis d- Psychology or History a response to Jordan Peterson? That is the one right there. Please go yes. down and just start reading where it says Jordan Peterson doesn't believe. It, it's it's and they're big bold headlines. It's probably yeah. about halfway through the article. Okay, start reading those headlines. Peterson does not have a Christian view of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Peterson does not have a Christian view of God. Peterson's interpretation is controlled by evolution. His individual ethic, his uh, Peterson and religious art. Moses was not a Jungian psychologist. Yeah, yeah, he's very Jungian in his approach to theology and and to understanding the world. Very Jungian. It's not biblical because the Bible ain't Jungian. Don't know if ever picked that up. But it's not. It's not psychological the way that we understand the term today. By the way, do you know what the word psychology actually is? It's logos, the lology at the end, psychology. I guess it would just be lo- psychology, just one L. Otherwise, you could be a lollard, which is totally different, and you don't want to be different. that either. Psychology, logos, so study of psychos, which is actually, I believe, suke, which is spirit, the soul. That's what, it, that's what it's a study of, because we used to understand that there's something about the inner essence of a man. Now, a Jungian can't get it, a secular psychologist can't get it, but we Christians can. We're body and we're soul. We're two things. We're physical and we're, we're, we're immaterial, our soul. What is your soul? It's not your brain. 
your soul is your your inner man, your essence, who you are, whether your brain is working right or not. The Bible typically refers to it as your heart, your the heart of a man. By the way, it wasn't Psalm 25, the address I said I'd never forget. It was Proverbs 25, that the purposes of man are like deep water. A man of understanding draws it out. Proverbs 20, verse 5. The heart, what you desire. And so the, 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 the inner man, the heart, it's volitional. It's, 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 it's your will center. It's, it's affectionate, it's affectional. And it's also your knowledge center where you know stuff. That's, 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 what it, that's what your heart is. So it's knowledge, it's emotions, and it's will. Uh, what's the one for the word? This is telling. Well, the, word, the word for the knowledge stuff. It ends in an all. That's what you are. You're a, you're a soul. You're not your brain. You're a soul. Now, Jordan Peterson, he doesn't understand that. The Bible does. Let's shun Jordan and send our young men to the Bible. This is Wretched Radio.